today I will be introducing you to the plant spirit tribes that make up my elixir of self-love, but more so of self-acceptance as we awaken the sacred you. My name is Kayla Alyssa and I am your wayward witch. Welcome to Sacred Space. This beautiful botanica can be crafted into a tea, tincture, or elixir. But you must always remember that the medical properties of herbs do not simply turn off because you're working with them for spiritual or ritual use. So you must do your research on contraindicators and consult your doctor before introducing any herbs into your self-care routine. If you're unsure what I mean by contraindicators, a quick Google search should help, and you can also view my video linked above and below on setting up your ritual apothecary. Now that the public service announcement has been made, let's join this video already in progress. In my attempt to embrace the self-care and self-love mo movement, I learned a valuable lesson. Before anything, I needed self-acceptance. It surprised me how many others struggle with this as well. It also seemed to be those who are healers or in service to others who struggle the most. We have no problem seeing value and worth in others. It's time to see this in ourselves. To that end, about three years ago, a group of what I refer to as botanical tribes or plant spirit tribes came to me, surrounded me, and asked to be part of my healing journey. It takes time and the road will cause you to stumble and even fall backward, but you have to accept that you are worthy of fighting for. You are worthy of healing. When you start to see your worth, you start to see all the beautiful aspects of yourself and start to accept, to believe. It's baby steps, guys. There is no miracle elixir, but there are vibrational energies gifted to us from plant spirits that can help us do the work to realign our own energy and thought patterns until we are able to maintain them for ourselves. The first plant spirit ally who came forward as the tribe leader was hibiscus. In the West, based on the maturity of books and blogs out there, hibiscus herself has been stereotyped as a plant for love and lust. But I am from the islands, and through my grandmother have experienced a very different side of this beautiful flower who is both delicate, strong, and ageless. Her energy is very much root, sacral, solar chakra energy that feeds into the heart space. The beautiful garnet-like red of her spirit is security. It is the root chakra vibration helping you ground yourself in the acceptance of who you are. Her energy travels up through the sacral chakra, which is not just about love and sexual acceptance from others, it's about accepting a body image of yourself. Her energy then moves up to the solar plexus and her fiery warmth helps stimulate our own strength of will and willpower. The will to believe in our worth, to begin the process of accepting ourselves, and the willpower to fight against any negative voices, both internal and external, that try to tell us differently. To understand that our view and truth about ourselves is ultimately what holds the power over us not other people's views. I feel here there's also a protection that begins to form, a barrier wall that will help filter the energy that moves up into the heart space. The heart, your heart, aches for you. They really do. The heart feels everything as she carries her vibration out from your core and then receives the energies that come back after traveling in your blood through you, she feels your pain and it's time to start healing. And as you walk through the energies of the chakra, shredding and releasing what no longer serves you, hibiscus is the power of self-acceptance. She is bold and strong, fragrant and healing, non-apologetic for how she was created. She has a strength about her and she knows you have it too. Accept yourself. As hibiscus helps open you up to self-acceptance, she makes room for other energies and vibrations to bloom within you. She makes room for self-love. It's still about you, my friend. This isn't about making room for love from another. 
This is about making room for love from yourself. This is where we welcome a beautiful root called Rodiola, which helps you open up to the potential of love, accepting love. And the first person you need to receive this love from is you. It is often the hardest thing to do. I struggle with it daily because when those who we are trained to believe should love and protect us, like parents and siblings, don't, you begin to wonder if it's you and that you were simply not worthy of love. But this is where the doubt begins and self-acceptance fails. So love yourself, know your worth, believe that you are the beautiful soul the creator sees that she made and that I see in you and that you should see in yourself. The most interesting thing is, many of us who can't love ourselves are healers and have so much love to give to others, to share with others, so we know that we are more than capable of loving acts of kindness. Why don't we share that with ourselves first? Even if it's just a thought in our own mind that we don't speak outwardly, that we take a minute to find the positive within ourselves as well. This is another form of rewriting the narrative that can be done daily. And if you haven't seen that video, I shall link it above and below as well. A plant spirit ally who is truly gifted in my personal practice for helping rewrite or transform the narrative, the energies within, is the white water lily. She is part of the Psychobotanica and Ethnobotanica range. White water lily is a trusted and steady ally in my shadow work. She is known in Mesoamerica for her ability to help shamans transform into jaguar spirit energy. It's her gift of transformation that aids magic and healing to this elixir. She adds another energy to help rewrite the narrative, to see things differently, to see the truth within you, the power and energy within you. She helps you transform the views that you have of yourself from a place of negativity to a place of positivity. She works on the principles that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transformed, and you have to take ownership of this process. In this way, she also helps you define boundaries of what is and is not okay treatment or narrative from again, both within yourself and others. The final plant spirit ally who adds her energy is probably not a huge surprise if you've been following me for a little bit, and that is Motherwort. She is my mama bear energy. When your life has been shaped by emotional and mental attacks, especially from too young of an age to understand what is happening or that it shouldn't be happening, being told by family, society, even co-workers that you aren't enough, even at times those who are friends making little digs in jest, there's a lot of energetic pressure coming at you from external sources and it starts to permeate your flow and you start to manifest it within. We let those energies transform our core base energy, our truth, and working with Water Lily to reprogram that energy is Motherwort. Motherwort is very much the same type of energy that Grandmother Blackthorn gives me. So while Motherwort goes into the mix, when I'm making my elixir, Grandmother Blackthorn grids her. They both provide the shielding energy of a mother's arms wrapped around you and gives you the courage and strength of bare energy when others are trying to verbally beat you down to say no. I don't care what you say about me or think about me. I care what I think about me. Now, in this process, it is so important, though, that this speech comes from a place of healing, not anger or narcissism. Don't become what you're fighting against. Don't become what you are healing from. These four beautiful botanical spirits can be made into a simple tea, as I've demonstrated in this video. But I spirit crafted an elixir from the same herbs, which I then used to work on my sugar skull tea ceremony. Now that ceremony, as well as all of this information, is being shared on my Patreon with the Cottage Witch level. Normally the rituals are reserved for the Hedge Witches, but this month each tear was gifted the bonus content of a ritual, because I do believe that the topic is so important. I hope you've enjoyed meeting my plant spirit tribe that creates the elixir or tea of love, self, 
love. This month my videos have been essentially a Valentine series to all of you for taking time out of your busy day to sit in sacred space with me. It is truly appreciated and heartfelt and I hope that it's gifted you something in return. As always, I encourage you to embrace the dark, to find the beautiful light within, and live in balance. Namaste and blessed be.